Mrs. Sophia Richard, 68 years old, is in hospital with pneumonia. She has been given an NACL 0.9% infusion at a rate of 80 millimeters an hour, as well as intravenous antibiotics. The physician asks to stop the infusion, but wants to continue the antibiotic treatment. Therefore, the attending nurse for Mrs. Richard stops the continuous NACL infusion and installs a pulse injection cap with extension tubing. Having checked the prescription in the file and prepared the materials, which includes a pulse injection cap and tubing extension, pre-primed with NACL 0.9%, the nurse goes to the user's bedside. The nurse performs hand hygiene prior to entering into the user's room in compliance with infection prevention measures in force. Hello. Hi. My name is Rosie Burns and I'm a nurse. The doctor has prescribed antibiotics, so I have to stop the solution to administer the medication. All right. Would you please tell me your name and date of birth? My name is Sophia Richard and I was born on November 18, 1970. Great. The nurse must ask the user's name and date of birth and compare the answers to the information on the bracelet. This double identification procedure is meant to reduce the risk of errors. The nurse puts on non-sterile gloves. The gloves protect from the user's biological fluids and prevent pathogen transmission. The nurse shuts off the infusion regulating slide clamp to keep the solution from flowing out while removing the tubing. The nurse removes the tape that secures the tubing. With her non-dominant hand, she stabilizes the catheter and removes the transparent film to provide access and then removes the tubing from the catheter. She then installs the extension for the pulse injection cap. The nurse disinfects the connecting points of the tubing and catheter with an alcohol swab and lets it dry to prevent the introduction of pathogens into the bloodstream. She places a sterile pad under the tube catheter connection to absorb any blood that may flow out while removing the tubing. The nurse stabilizes the catheter with the index and middle fingers of her non-dominant hand to prevent accidental dislodgement. She exerts pressure on the vein to keep blood from flowing out of the catheter. After she removes the tube and then she quickly connects the extension tube with the pulse injection cap to close off direct access to the vein. The nurse takes the tubing connection and disinfects the insertion site with chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol swab brushing back and forth in a semicircle over the insertion site from the center outward. She lets the site dry completely to leave time for the antiseptic agent to take effect and allow the transparent film to stick to the skin. The nurse secures the IV catheter with the sterile transparent film, making sure to cover the end of the tubing. The transparent film keeps the catheter insertion site sterile and allows for quick visual checks of the site.
The nurse disinfects the pulse injection cap with an alcohol swab and lets it dry for 30 seconds. She adjoins the NACL 0.9% syringe and checks the venous return by slowly pulling the plunger. This verification is essential to ensure the permeability of the infusion catheter. The nurse wets the catheter with 3 to 5 milliliters of NACL 0.9% using the turbulence method or according to organizational policy so as to dislodge any deposit from the catheter lumen. The nurse closes the slide clamp of the extension tube. This procedure aims to prevent occlusions and infections. The nurse secures the tubing with tape and writes the catheter installation date, the date and time of the dressing application, and her initials, and applies it to the dressing. This allows for diligent follow-ups by healthcare personnel. Did you have any questions? No, not for now, thanks. This is not the first time I get this kind of treatment. The nurse performs hand hygiene to comply with infection prevention measures and leaves to the user's room.